All right, guys. Uh, welcome to Radical Review. Okay, Radical Review. All right, so today we're going to be looking a little bit at Algebra 1 in order to do what we need to do. All right, so we're going to be taking a look at radicals. Radicals are basically these little signs, okay, otherwise known as square roots. You can have different radicals. The only one we're really going to look at today is a square root, okay? In order to do what we need to do today, there are a couple of things that we need to know. For starters, all right, we need to understand what a prime number is. All right, what is a prime number? All right, a prime number is a number that is divisible by itself and one only, nothing else. So for example, uh, is one a prime number? Yes, because it's only divisible by one and itself. Is two a prime number? Yes, because it's only divisible by two and one. In other words, you can only do one times two. Is three a prime number? Yes, because it's divisible by one and three and nothing else. Is four a prime number? No, because you can divide four by um, two as well as one and four. So this is not a prime number. Is five a prime number? Yes, because nothing else goes into it except one and five. Is six a prime number? No, because in addition to one and six going into it, two and three also goes into it. Is seven a prime number? Yes, because only um, one and seven goes into it. So you understand the whole drift. A prime number is a number that is divisible by itself and one. All right, so tonight, today we're gonna to take a look at <coughs> prime factorization, okay? Prime factorization. All right, for example, if I asked you what is the prime factorization of 77? What that means is you're gonna break down 77 into factors. The easiest way to do this is called a factor tree. All right, so what numbers go into, what two numbers go into 77? Um, off the top of my head, I can think of seven and 11. Are there any other numbers except for one and seven that go into seven? No. Any other numbers except one and 11 that go into seven? No. That means these are your prime factorizations because only thing that goes into them is themselves and one. So that's how you break down 77. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's say 189. How would you break down 189? So what two numbers go into 189? If ever you are <clears throat> confused or don't even know where to start, always check 2, 3, and 5. Always check 2, 3, and 5. So 189, I'm going to check 2. It's a decimal, so it doesn't go into it evenly. 189, I'm going to check 3. 63. So I can break this down to 63 times 3. will give me 189. 3 is a prime number, so every time you get to a prime number, what I want you to do is just circle it. All right, 3 is a prime number, um, so I can't break that down anymore. I can break down 63 since I started with 3. Let me go ahead and just do 3. I can, okay, so 21 times 3 will give you 63. That is a prime number, so go ahead and circle it. Break down 21. Again, keep doing 3. 3 and 7. And 7 is a prime number. Once I have everything circled because everything is a prime num number, that is my prime factorization, okay? That is my prime factorization. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Let's say 108. All right, let's break 108 down. Because it's even, I already know two is gonna go into it somehow. So let's do 108 divided by two is 54. Two is a prime number, so circle it. Break down 54, let me just keep doing two. 27, keep doing two. Oh, it's a decimal, let's try three, nine. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to circle nine. Three is a prime number because you can't break it down anymore. Uh, nine, what can you break nine down into? Um, three and three, right? Three times three. All right, so this is the prime factorization of 108. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, nice and simple. All right, so we're going to play uh, a quick game. Okay, it's a made-up game, so um, don't try and figure out what it is because it's really a made-up game. 
All right, so you have a deck of cards in front of you. What I want you to do is go through your deck of cards, and you're going to take out all the composite numbers. That means all the numbers that are not prime numbers. Is this a prime number? No, because it's divisible it's, uh, by two, four, other things. Is this a prime number? No. Is two a prime number? Yes. Five? Yes. Q? All right, keep all the letters. Um, two? Yes. A, keep it. Ten? No. No, no, yes, 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 no, no, yes, yes, no, no, because three goes into that one. Yes, no, no, yes, 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 yes. No, 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 yes, no, no, yes, no, 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 yes, and yes. All right, so we're only going to play this game with prime numbers, okay? Prime numbers is all we need. So once you've gotten your deck of cards split up into only prime numbers, so in other words, you've taken out, uh, <clears throat> let's say, from least to greatest, you've taken out four, six, Eight, nine, and ten. Four, six, eight, nine, and ten. You've taken out four, six, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So what I want you to do is go ahead and shuffle the deck. All right. Go ahead and shuffle the deck, and I want you to give ten cards to each person. So, ten cards to each person. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Now I'm only playing by myself, so I'm only going to show you mine. Then I want you to put the deck of cards that you have left over in the middle where everyone else can reach it. All right, now I'm showing you my deck of cards so I can teach you the game. What I need you to do, <clears throat> don't show anyone your cards, obviously. What I need you to do is simply make what I'm calling books, okay? In order to make a book, you need to take out pairs. All right, so if you see two of the same number, take those out. Not three, not four, only two, only a pair. I don't care if I have more than a pair, I must make a pair in order to take a book. Then I want you to put it on your left-hand side. So automatically, I can see a few books here. I have a book of Ks, so that's one book. Put them face up so that uh, the other players can see you're not cheating. All right, I have a book of Aces. Put them on your left-hand side, book of aces. Uh, what else do I have? A book of threes, a book of twos. All right, and all that I'm left with is a Q and a J in my hand. Perfect. So once you've got your books laid out on your table, you're now ready to start playing the game. The object of the game is to play until you have no cards left. The person who has cards, uh, no cards left first wins the game. So if you get rid of all your cards, you win the game. So what you're going to do, you're going to take turns each picking a card. Now every time someone picks, you're going to start with the dealer. The dealer is going to pick the first card. Once the dealer picks the first card, the next person immediately picks up that next card. Don't wait on the dealer because all the dealer is checking is if they made a book. Did I make a book? No. So I just hold on to this. So everyone picks, everyone picks, everyone picks. Put your books down, then it comes back to me. I pick. Did I make a book? No. Everyone picks all the way around, comes back to me. Did I make a book? No. Did I make a book? No. Did I make a book? Yes. So every time I make a book, I keep putting my books down. When you run out of cards in the middle, I'm not going to do this because it's obviously by myself. When you run out of cards in the middle, all right, what I want you to do is kind of like go fish now. You're going to turn to only one person and you're going to ask them for one of your cards. So you'd be like, uh, let's say Tom is here, my imaginary friend Tom. All right, Tom, do you have a two? And if Tom has a two, Tom's going to give me the two, and then I'm going to put the book down. The first person who finished their cards wins. All right, now keep in mind, if Tom didn't have a two, you want to remember that I asked for a two, so that if you needed a two, you could go ahead and ask. All right, first person to finish all their cards wins the game. Right, okay, so... Let me show you how playing that game falls into math and what we are doing in math. Okay, so you remember before we broke down the prime factors of 189. All right, and we broke them down to be 
in order, 3 times 3 times 3 times 7. And by the way, you could always check to make sure that you did it correctly. If I multiply the prime factors, I should get 189 back. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 7, 189. Okay, perfect. All right, now, when you have that in a radical, so they will tell you simplify. So this is simplifying. Simplifying radicals. Simplifying radicals. So they'll put 189 in a radical. And they'll tell you you need to simplify this. Because just like fractions, you always, 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 always simplify. All right, so that's how you go ahead and simplify the radical 189. Well, you're going to break it down to its prime factors, which we already did before, and we found out that it was 3 times 3 times 3 times 7. Then you simply ask yourself, do you have any books? All right, remember, a book is made out of a what? A pair. I do have a book. I have a book right here because I have two threes. So I have one book. Remember when playing the game, you took your one book and you put it down on your left-hand side. That's what you're going to do. So you're going to take your one book and you're going to put it on your left-hand side. So book, you put it on the left-hand side. Do I have any other books? No. All right, so once you have, you have taken out all your books, you're going to go ahead and um, simplify the problem. So 3 is outside now, and then I have 3 times 7, which is 21. And that's it. That's how you simplify radicals. All right, let's take a look at another example, one that we've already done. Um, we did 77 earlier, and that split up to 11 times 7. All right, so again, if you were simplifying radical 77, you would split it up to 11 times 7. Ask yourself, do you have any books? Are there any pairs? No. Then that means it was already as simple as possible, so the answer was still radical 77. All right, take a look at your other example, which was 108. All right, and 108 broke down to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so radical 108. Simplifying that, again, you break it down to its prime factors. Put them in order, just so that they're easier to see. All right, do I have any books? Yes, I have a book of two. Okay, and every time I take a book out, go ahead and cross them out so you don't get confused. And then I also have a book of three. So it's still multiplication because they're all multiplied, but now I'm just taking them outside. So outside I have 3 times 2, which is going to give me 6, and inside all I have left is 3. Okay, And that's how you simplify radicals. Now just a quick note, I just want to mention this. Let's say you were asked to simplify radical 108, but there was already a number out here, let's say 5. All right, the process is exactly the same thing, so I'd still break it down, break 108 down to these, so I put 5 out here. Break this down, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. Then still take your books out. So here's a book. Take that out. Here's another book. Take that out. And nothing else. Then you see, I just left the 5 out there. So I don't touch it. I just leave it out there. Then I have 3 times 2, which is 6, times 5, which is 30. And then inside, I just have radical 3. So even if there's a number outside, it doesn't matter. You just leave it out there, and then you just multiply it at the end. And that's how you simplify radicals.